Welcome to my kitchen. Today, I'm making a pot roast, and this happens to be one of my family's favorite things. I am starting with a chuck roast. This chuck roast is about two and a half pounds, and this is going to feed four to six people, and hopefully we'll have some leftovers at the end, and we can make some roast beef sandwiches. One of the things that I look for in a pot roast or a chuck roast is this marbling. This isn't really heavy marbling, but it's got the nice fat running through. And this tells me that this is going to be flavorful and tender. If you get a chuck roast and it doesn't have the marbling, you're probably going to end up with a tough roast. So this tells me that's not going to happen with this one. Now, I only use a few simple ingredients for this recipe. Five to be exact, and really you could only use four and that would be just fine. I'm using kosher salt, all-purpose flour, bouillon cubes, and then at the end when I make my gravy, I'm adding this kitchen bouquet for a little color and just a tiny bit of flavor. Now you do not have to use this. If you don't use it, it's going to be just as delicious, but I like using the kitchen bouquet at the end because it gives me this rich, deep, dark color that I personally like a lot. Well, today, I'm making this for my Aunt Gail and my Uncle Edwin. They've been a little under the weather lately, and I thought I would do a little something for them and bring them a meal and then sit and visit for a while. I know that they're gonna love that. My Aunt Gail is my mother's sister, and it was only the two of them growing up. We were a tight little family, and we spent a lot of time together. This is my grandmother's recipe, and there's very few times that I've sat at her table and this wasn't on it. We all love it and we've continued to make it pretty much the same way throughout our lives. Occasionally, when I want a little something different, I'll replace the bouillon cubes with some of that famous uh, mushroom or onion soup but I know my family and they like it simple. They just want the basic flavor of the star chuck roast and this is going to give that to me. Now, if you don't have bouillon cubes, you can replace that and use a can of beef consomme. I found that the bouillon cubes give me the same flavor and take up a lot less space in my pantry. I don't know about you, but I am always looking for extra space in my pantry and bouillon cubes are much easier to store and they last for a really, really long time. So let's go ahead and get started on this roast. I'm going to go ahead and add my kosher salt. I'm not going to salt this heavily because my bouillon cubes have quite a bit of salt in them. I just want to make sure that I get that salt on both sides and I also lift up the ends and I salt them as well. You want to make sure that you get this all over. Great. Now, I'm just going to rub that in a little bit. Oh yeah, this looks great. Oh, such a beautiful roast. Hello there, darling. Okay, now comes the all-purpose flour. And I'm going to take a little bit and I'm just gonna cover all the sides, just like I did with the salt. Now, this also is the first thing that I ever made my husband. And I had run into him at the grocery store and bless his heart I felt so sorry for him you should have seen his cart it was pitiful well I thought you know what I think I'll invite him over and just make a nice meal for him 
um, we were friends at the time, and so uh, anyway, I thought I would just be a blessing to him. Well, later on that day, that same day that I had seen him at the grocery store, I had a possum show up at my back door. Well, I had a little teeny tiny yard, and at the time, I had a schnauzer. Her name was Coco. Oh, I love, love, love Coco. Well, she thought she was a bulldog at heart, so she would go after that possum, and she was relentless. I could not get her away from that. So, I text Jimmy, my now husband, and I said, hey, by chance, do you have a trap? And he said, I sure do. And I said, well, I'll tell you what, I've got a possum problem, and if you'll come over and trap this possum, I'll make you dinner. And he said, that's a deal. So this is what I made him. Okay, this is all done. I've got it salted and floured, and I have my Dutch oven over here, and I'm about to heat that up to a medium high heat, and I'm going to add two tablespoons of oil. So, let me get started on that. Well, I'm adding my oil. I like to add my oil after my pan has heated up. I know this looks a little strange for oil. One of the things in the South that we're famous for is saving bacon grease. We also save our, our chicken stock and we save the chicken fat. After it cooks, we skim that off the top, put it in a container and put it in the freezer or the refrigerator. Now, this happens to be some drippings off of some things that I've made like uh, fried chicken or fried pork chops. And I'll strain my grease and then I'll add it back to my container. So anyway, just a little tip there. If you don't have any of the drippings like I do right now, then use a peanut oil or use a good vegetable oil that has a high burn rate. That's important because this is going to get really hot and it needs to sear. Olive oils, butters, and things like that will burn before you can sear your roast and we don't want that happening. Well, I know that's good and hot, so let's get this in the pan. Listen. That sound is exactly what you want to hear. What we're doing is we're searing the roast on all sides, not only bottom and top, but we're also doing around as well. That's important because that's going to seal your juices in the roast. It's gonna make a nice crust as well. Remember, color is flavor. So you always want to make sure that you get some nice color on whatever meat that you're cooking, whether it's chicken or chops or beef. So I'm gonna let this do its magic for about a minute or two, and I'll come back and I'll show you how it's done. This is what you're looking for. If it's a little darker, that's okay, but you don't want it to be any lighter. I'm adding one and a half cups of water and I've also added my two bouillon cubes and I'm just gonna let this come to a boil so that they dissolve. Well, my roast has come up to temperature and what I'm going to do is set my setting on low. From this point on, I want it to simmer. And I'm going to add my lid. A good tight lid is really important here. I'm going to set my timer for two hours and it's going to sit right here. 
Occasionally, I'll lift my lid and I'll take a look at it, but I try not to do that too often because I want that heat to stay inside my pot. Well, I'm going to go start on my sides and I'll see you back here in a bit. Well, my roast has been cooking for about an hour and I want to show this to you. Look at that. Now this is what the flour has done on top. It's already getting so nice and tender and you see that dark color where there's flavor. And I'm going to take this and I'm going to flip it over without making a mess. Ooh, I did it. And I'm going to let this sit for another hour. I'm going to turn up my temperature because I just let all my heat out, bring it back up to a slow boil, and then reduce it to low. Well, my pot roast has finished cooking and it looks amazing. What I did after the two hours was I turned off my burner and I allowed the roast to sit for about 15 minutes with the lid on. Then I took my lid off and now I'm ready to transfer my roast. I've put my apron on because I have a feeling that I might make a slight mess. So anyway, I'm going to go ahead and transfer this to my dish. This looks amazing and it is almost already falling apart. I want to keep this intact because I'm going to slice this and then I will add it at the end back to my gravy. Well, speaking of gravy, I'll show you how I do this. There's a couple of easy tips and steps we've got to making the most delicious gravy you'll ever eat and let's get started. This is what my gravy looks like right now. This is before I've added anything, flour, kitchen bouquet. It's just a nice au jus. But I want more than au jus. I want a nice gravy. Well, I have the leftover flour here that I use to dredge my roast in. I would say that it's maybe about two tablespoons and I've added some cold water to this and I'm just making a nice little slurry with my whisk. This doesn't have to get thick, it's going to thicken up when we put it into our pot. Well, I've got this together and I'm going to go ahead and turn my burner back on. I'm going to put this on a medium to high heat and I'm going to allow this to come back up. Now before it gets too hot, I'm going to go ahead and add my slurry mixture. If I were to do this as it was boiling, I would have to add hot water to my flour because it would lump up. We don't want lumps in our gravy. so. I am just going to stir that in and allow it to come up. While this is coming up to a boil, I want to tell you the rest of the story about the night my now husband came over for dinner. Well, remember I told you that a possum showed up at my back door. Possums are actually a very friendly creature. I know that's hard to believe because they look so scary, but they're actually harmless. The concern that I had was that Coco, my, my sweet schnauzer, she's since passed on and we miss her so much, but she was at that back door constantly wanting to get at that possum. Well, after dinner, my husband set the trap and he was able to trap the possum. And believe this or not, that night after dinner, he went and he released the possum at a church. I won't tell you which church. They had a wooded area that's right next to their church. And so the possum was set free and we believe that the possum lived happily ever after. And so are we. 
since then, we've married and we still laugh a lot about the pot roast and the possum. Well, this is coming up to a boil. And as it does, this gravy is going to thicken up. Now, I'm not making a really thick gravy. If you would like a thick, thick gravy, then add more flour. I've added about two tablespoons, and I'm gonna start with that. If it doesn't thicken up the way I'd like it to, then I'll add just a touch more and go through the same process that I showed you with the flour slur with the flour slurry. Say that three times fast. Well, this is looking good. I'm gonna let this do its thing for about a minute or two, and I'll show you what we've got. Here's the start of my gravy. As you can see, when I added the flour, it lightened the color and changed it quite a bit. Now what I'm doing is adding about a teaspoon, maybe a little bit more, of the kitchen bouquet. And I'm going to show you what this does. This is darkening that gravy and giving it that beautiful, rich color. Well, my gravy looks perfect. And I just turned off my burner. This Dutch oven contains a lot of heat. It's ceramic. So this is gonna continue to cook and boil for just a little bit, even without the heat on. I'm stirring so I don't scald the bottom. We don't want any burnt taste in this pot roast for my Aunt Gail and my Uncle Edwin. So I'm just gonna sit here and stir. I'm really looking forward to going over and visiting with them, and I know that they are going to love this meal. Now, here I am slaving over this gravy, but I tell you what my Uncle Edwin's gonna do. He's gonna take this roast and he is gonna drench it in ketchup. Now, I know you don't know anybody like that, but we've got a few people in our family that just cannot have any type of roast or beef without ketchup. And you know what? That's all right with me. All right. I'm gonna let this sit. I'm gonna let it cool down for a few minutes, and then I'm going to carve my roast and transfer it back into my pot. See you then. Well, I've got my roast on my cutting board. Now, I chose to take the roast right out of the pot and put it in a dish because I knew immediately that juices would start to release and I wanted to make sure that I kept all of that and then I added it back to my gravy. Okay, I'm ready to go ahead and carve this. Now, one of the things that you want to do when you're carving beef is always look for the grain. You want to cut against the grain. If you don't do that and you cut with the grain, you will have a very tough and chewy roast no matter how long you cooked it. So, let's see how we're doing here. Oh, this looks so good, perfect. Perfect. Now I'm going to create a few slices here. Mm, this looks amazing. Now because I have a membrane here in the middle, I've got a grain going both ways. So I'm going to turn this as I cut. I'm going to cut this all up and then I'm going to transfer this back to my pot and smother it in gravy. I've cut it all up and I just did different pieces and slices. Like I said, I bet my Uncle Edwin gets this piece right here and puts ketchup all over it. <laughs> but this should be enough, like I said, to feed four to six people and hopefully make a sandwich or two at the end. So let's get this back in gravy. Here's my roast and gravy. Now what I'm gonna do is just spoon a little bit of that gravy all over the top. Now remember, I'm taking this to my 
Aunt Gail and my Uncle Edwin. So I'm going to let this sit for a little while longer and then I will transfer this to another container, one that they don't have to wash. Well, I've got everything almost packed up. I'm still cooking my rice and I'm waiting on that and then I'll add it to my package. I've got their roast. I have a homemade macaroni and cheese that I know my Aunt Gail loves. I'm going to share this recipe with you soon. It is a hit with everyone. I've also got some field peas and some fresh squash and I made some pear turnovers this morning. I made some pear preserves with the pears that our cabin neighbors gave us a few weeks ago. And so I'm including those, they can spoon them over the top and then finish it off with a dollop of Cool Whip. I know that this is gonna bless them and I'm blessed. I have had wonderful mentors in the Lord over the years and they've taught me so many times when people are, are ill or they're just going through a little something that you don't need to have a lot of pretty words to say to show up and what better than to show up with a meal i want to treat them like the treasure that they are well i think this is just about ready to go my rice has another two minutes and we'll be on our way Yeah. Hey! Oh, it's so good to see you. Oh, yeah, it is. You too. Thank you.